Hey family, how are you? I feel like this is the first time I get to really sit down and talk to you guys and like have our personal one-on-one. -on -one. I feel like it's been a little minute. Um, I'm not at my house. I'm not vlogging in my space. So it's a little weird for me. Um, I, the quality is a little, you know, and I got a couple gas pains. So every now and then we go on. I'm gonna have to take a little break. But I wanted to come really quickly and just give you guys an update, a rundown. First and foremost, before I even start this video, I genuinely want to say thank you to the bariatric team at Brooklyn Hospital, um, Dr. Pratt, AJ, the nutritionist Shamalika. Um, amazing, amazing, amazing. If I can recommend anywhere, if you're in New York City, if you're not, y'all know I'm spooky. I'm scary. So I needed to make sure I was in safe hands. I think hands are no safer. Um, if it wasn't for them, I don't think I would have been able to be comfortable to go through with this. As you know, this happened really quickly. And when I say nervous, we're going to get to that. So I'm just going to give you guys a raw breakdown. For those of you who've been here for a while, y'all know if anybody going to tell you the truth, it's going to be me. You were there with me through the journey of getting approved for surgery and all that good stuff. If you're like me, you feel like it happened really quickly, right? Because I did. I feel like it was just fast, honey, fast. And I look busted. Jesus. But it's life. Well, I woke up on the 8th. You guys see me. You see me after surgery from the previous vlog I posted. Um, I wasn't nervous until I changed into my gown. That's when I got nervous. That's when I was just like, okay, what the freak? I'm really about to do this. And it was like, I, I just I just couldn't fathom. I couldn't, I couldn't fathom. And I kept every nurse, every doctor, I said, I'm nervous. They said, miss, you are okay. You are going to be just fine. I've never gotten surgery before in my life, ever. So um, through the process, I went at 9 o'clock in the morning. I got there at 9 a.m. They Actually, I had to be there by 9 a.m., so I got there around 8.30. They called me around 9.30. Um, they took me into, like, I guess it's like a pre- of the pre-waiting room. So that's where like you got weighed, you changed into your gown, they took your items, made sure it was accounted for, put your stuff in the locker. And I was like, okay, this is, this is, this is cool. And then you go, you put your phone away and you go into the pre-waiting area where you're gonna get called to go actually into the surgical room. That was a, the only annoying part to me because there was like a lot going on the day I went to get surgery. So the OR was backed up. So I sat there for like three surgeries. It was like three surgeries ahead of me. So I sat there all that time with no phone, but the nurses was very accommodating. Kaisha called that station to death, honey. She, them nurses just was like, oh, we know it's for Jasmine. Because Kaisha called them down, honey. She wouldn't stop ringing that nurse phone. So I was in touch with her during this whole journey. She was by my side the entire time. Girl was downstairs in the hospital the entire time. You know, because of COVID, she couldn't actually wait with me. But she wasn't going nowhere. So when it was my turn to go into the surgical room, I think that's when the shaking started. Now I'm just like trembling and I'm just, I told them like, I'm legit scared. And they're like, you have nothing to worry about. You're about to be in the best sleep you've ever been in in your life. And then I've never been in the operating room before. I said, nah, this is really like something off of TV. This is something you see on TV with this like, this little cold slab of a bed and these big bright lights. I said, oh my gosh, I was shaking, shaking. And I laid on this table and I just seen doctors. It was just moving quick. Everybody was talking to me. What made me feel comfortable is everybody was confident. Like they was in a cheerful, great mood. And I was just like, okay, y'all look like y'all know what y'all doing in here. Like, all right. The last thing I can remember it was 
someone strapping down my legs, putting a strap over my arms. And it was about one, two, three, four doctors. And then I heard the anesthesiologist come in and he said, oh, you ready? And I felt him grab my arm. I seen him put a needle in my arm. I said, I feel nauseous. He said, you do? That was it. Baby, I don't know what was given, but I need it for my kids. I need that. I need some of that to take home because I was gone. You hear me? Gone. When I woke up, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and I'm not going to lie to you. When I woke up, I was in recovery. Um, I felt Kaisha hand rubbing my head. And the only thing I could remember is me saying, I need help. Don't move a lot. Don't move a lot. You're going to hurt more, okay? Okay. I can't take it. They're going to give you some more pain meds. I can't take it. I, I need help. The pain. Baby, childbirth ain't got nothing on that. I felt like somebody was stabbing me in my stomach and it was an elephant laying on my chest. All I can say was help me. Please, somebody help me. I cannot take it. And I remember like Doc was rushing and giving me needles and stuff and I heard them telling Kaisha, cause I was in and out. I heard them telling Kaisha, you can go now cause she needs to rest. And Kaisha kept telling, telling me and my aunt, babe, close your eyes. Cause if you don't close your eyes, I gotta go. <laughs> the girl's crazy. So I went to sleep after that. I was knocked for I don't know how long. And when I got up, I just felt pain and pressure. And I just was like, oh, hell no. Uh -uh. I didn't even know that was you. What was I thinking? Honestly, that was the first I said, what the fuck was I thinking? Girl, but the recovery process was good. Um, I got, they transferred me up into a room and around the clock, the nurses and the doctors was there. Um, even the surgeon, like, I feel like I know a lot of people had bariatric surgery. A lot of people had surgery before. It's rare that I hear people talk about like how involved the surgeon is. Like Dr. Pratt was very involved. She came to visit me multiple times. She spoke to me. The bariatric coordinator, AJ, was very involved. It's just like, I felt like I had a support system. If I didn't feel like I had a support system, I don't know what I would have done. Um, I do have a few multivitamins. I am on blood thinners. About four or five people showed me how to take the blood thinners. Like, it was just an abundance of support. And um, I'm here. I'm, I'm at Kaisha's house. I'm not home yet. I'll be home today. I'm recovering. And um, it isn't the easiest of journeys. And I won't sit here to you. I know everybody's story is different everybody some people are up like girl i don't know i feel like i never even got surgery i wonder if they even did the surgery i'm moving oh i know i got surge baby i know i got it um <clears throat> i'm in some discomfort um i know i this is what i'm gonna touch on very slightly because this is this i refuse to beg to differ I know a lot of people think like, oh, surgery is the easy way out. This is one of the toughest battles I've ever been through in my life. Sometimes I feel like, bitch, you should have just got on the treadmill. This is no way near shape or form the easy way out. Everything that you would have to do to get healthy is everything I still have to do while not having the option of indulging or less I'll hurt myself. So you can choose to have a cheat day and work out and be great. I can't choose to have a cheat day. 
I have to do these things. So right now I'm on the liquid diet phase and I'm having broth and I'm having water and more broth and more water. Don't for a second think that surgery is going to take your cravings away. Kaisha cooked some steak in here. This house is full of steak. My mouth is drooling. Oh, gasping. Mm. My mouth is drooling for the steak. I smell the steak. The steak smells. I'm ready to drink the grease off the steak. It smells amazing, but I can't have it. So I've been chewing soup, broth, been chewing this broth, just picturing it was a steak. Um, I do know that mentally, you gotta, you gotta be prepared. Cause anybody could go get surgery. Like I said, them cravings are still there. You still have to work on your relationship with food. You have to be ready to commit to a lifestyle change. Even though I smell food around me and I see others around me eating and I see everything around me that's still going on, I'm making self-conscious choices in my head because I have a relationship with food. I would like to call it a food addiction. Food is my comfort. So I'm like, you know what? When I get to my puree phase, I'm not going to have mashed potatoes. I'm going to have cauliflower mash. I'm looking forward to the cauliflower mash. Like, I'm a big meat eater. I'm not really into carbs anyway. You could take the mac and cheese, the rice, and all that. Give me some steak with some broccoli. Girl, I'll tear it down. I could still eat protein protein is my favorite in moderation like i'm not the french fry girl i'll just eat 82 fried chicken wings i'm gonna have to eat the baked chicken the inside like it's a lot of options that i'm still gonna have and you have to literally change your life change your mindset they just gave you a whole new life like don't even look at it like i just got weight loss surgery you just you just you have been given a whole brand new life what you want to do with it choose what you want to do with it so i am now preparing myself mentally as you guys know i always say i think i'm a very strong person so mentally i'm just getting myself together to know that you know what what you want ain't what you need it's so many healthy and great options out there and i'm gonna seek those options but guys, I just want to let you know that I'm okay. I miss you. I will be back to vlogging. I had to take a little break because I don't know who I thought I was. I thought surgery was about to be a breeze. But walking in and go sip some of my water. Because now them gas pains is there. Family, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody for your continuous support. All the amazing DMs I got. The messages to get well soon. Like... Honestly, you guys are so amazing. Y'all y'all always my pillar. Special, special, extreme special. Thank you to Kaisha. I low-key think she likes being my home health aide. Um, she was doing stuff for me that I didn't need her to do. I was in the shower. Why are you washing my butt? Nobody needed you to do that. I didn't ask for that. So, she's really enjoying this. Um, I love her to death. She's been amazing. Ooh, baby. She's been so good. My sister for holding the kids down, huh? And Kaisha, they've been playing house together. I said, y'all better not sleep with one another, honey. Because y'all loving this role a little too much. They was walking around on the phone last night. Talking about the kids and dinner. I said, okay, y'all doing? Y'all really playing house. Relax. Calm down. But thank you to my sister. Thank you to my girlfriend. Thank you to the bariatric team at Brooklyn Hospital. Thank you to all my supporters. Y'all are dope. Y'all are amazing. Like, mm, I can't wait until I'm meeting great. Oh, God. All right, let me get up and walk. I'll see y'all later, family.